in order to make this camper shell fit for this truck, first I bought this bracket and then custom cut it. And then now I'm securing it to the, the back of the shell so that there's no gap. So that's the only downside about using this camper shell is I lose about, I don't know, two inches of space. It's not that bad. And the trade-off is, you know, I get a ton of headroom, so very much worth it. I made a, a gasket to fit the perimeter of the, the truck beds for the surface where the, the shell mounts to the bed. So I'm gonna put that on by myself somehow. I think I have an idea. Yeah, we'll see what happens. All right, so I got the shell propped up. I just got a jack right here, tilting this whole thing. Got one clamp holding that side. Just gotta do what you gotta do, you know? So I'm just gonna secure this gasket with this adhesive, put it on the rail all the way across here, and then we'll do the other side. Okay, so the camper shell is fitted nicely now. Got the weather stripping on, so it's all watertight. Now, uh, I just need to get five bolts from the hardware store so that this bracket can uh, mount to the bed right here. Then we'll be totally done messing around with this camper shell. And then it's time to actually get to like the fun parts. In terms of the back, this is what we have. It took like a lot of doing to make it fit. Originally, this camper shell was custom made for a Ford Ranger. So the dimensions were not exactly fit for a Toyota pickup truck from the 80s. So I saw this camper shell on Craigslist and realized if I could make this fit for my Toyota, that I would be set for, for a couple years. Like I'll, I think I'll be able to live out of this thing for a few years. The previous generation that I had with the camper shell, you know, it came up to the, the roof line, which was here. So I, I bought a lot more space. Long story short, I read online that the Ranger beds are very similar in dimensions to the Toyota pickup trucks from the, the mid to late 80s. You know, I measured my bed out, messaged back and forth between this guy trying to sell this. I wasn't quite understanding what the seller was talking about in terms of the dimensions. So I drove around Davis for like a half an hour, which is insane because Ford Rangers are usually everywhere, but it took me a while to find a second generation and I measured that all out in some front yard of some dude's house. He wasn't home. Anyways, I had to do what I had to do. Turns out that the dimensions are there indeed very similar. So I was able to make this work. Fits really good now. Very happy with that. Let me open it all up and just give you an idea of the canvas that we now have to paint on. This is the, the skeleton of what we have now. This has got a lot of potential. I'll actually be able to sit up in this rig. Uh, I'm going to have custom lighting, everything like that. Not sure what I'm going to do for the walls and stuff, but the, the floor is going to be wood again. I'm going to have that, that bed that I used to have here. The pull-out drawer that's like six feet long comes out to here. I'll have my stove right here. Uh, what else? I don't know. The sky's the limit now. I think the hard part is over. Trying to find something like this that would fit for this truck was really hard. Uh, really happy with the results. Now, uh, like I said, it's time to do all the fun stuff. So stay tuned and, and we'll see what we come up with for the interior of this thing. Davis Ace Hardware. Uh, I seem to be coming here like every day lately just to grab nuts and bolts and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm making a bracket so the license plate sits nice on there. Um, I got this bumper because I hit a deer and then a week later, I almost hit another deer. I had to swerve out of the way. You're not supposed to do that, but um, survive. But now I'm just gonna hit the deer. So I'm not gonna swerve. I'm not gonna do anything like that. But uh, I lost my turn signal, so I replaced that. And then also a nice little dent right there from, I don't know, the, the deer's eyeball, I don't know. These should be good. I just grabbed two more to mount this bracket to the actual bumper. Probably put a hole here and a hole here and cut this bracket a little bit shorter. Should be good. I'm also just fixing basically everything in this truck that annoys me. Like this is cracked. I'm gonna fix that, I'm gonna glue that. Just every little thing like that. So I fixed this already. This vent would just close every time I would go over a bump and I have to reopen it. Uh, I shimmed it with like a nylon bushing. So it's, that's good now. Anyways, it's just all these little things add up and make you want to just jump off a fucking bridge sometimes when, when all those things hit you at once. Uh, this is basically my house now. So I, I want my house to be enjoyable. Like you hear that? Clutch is squeaking. So I got to fix that too. As far as the little things go, uh, I also just installed this radio. I just want to be able to have Bluetooth radio, just, you know, I want to be civilized. I'm sick of, I'm sick of things just not working, you know? There is a, a terrible rattling 
deep, deep, deep within the dash. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's been bothering me for a good six years now. There's no way to, to figure that out because it only happens when I'm driving and it's deep in the dash. I can't really like climb under there. I'm gonna need somebody to to join me on a ride sometime so we can get to the bottom on this. See that? We got a license plate light out. You hearing that? I'm not. This fucking horn's busted. I mean, it's not like I don't take care of the truck. I've got pages on pages of maintenance that I've done to the truck. But even then, still, somehow everything is still broken. But I must say that this truck has never left me stranded and it always keeps driving and it always gets from point A to point B. That being said though, uh, you know, there's a crack right here. That propagated one day. I, I remember waking up, coming into the truck and just seeing that. And I, I didn't even touch it. It just, it just happened overnight. But that's okay. This thing's got character. It's been through a lot. Previous owner hung himself, hit a deer with it. It got stolen last year from me. Like somebody took the truck and it was gone for a few weeks. I thought I would never ever see it again. Luckily, uh, the police found it like in the next city over. I think I have footage of me when I went to the tow yard to pick it up and I had no idea what the condition was gonna be in. Like the police, they gave me no information. They just said, hey, your, your truck is here. So I went to see it. This is what I found. Okay, holy shit. Okay, it looks like they got into the tailgate. Dude, it's in one piece. Holy shit. Dude, it's all in one piece. No way. That's crazy. Either way, this truck means a lot to me. It's a piece of shit sometimes, but you know, I love it. So I think tomorrow I'm gonna sit down and, you know, recite the good things about this truck because there, there's a lot of good about it too. So anyways, that's a wrap for the night. License plate nicely mounted. That's done. I'm working on getting this uh, third brake light to work. So I wired it to the left tail light. So it has switched power when you hit the brakes. So I spliced into the, the ground and positive for that switch power. Yeah, so I had to take all this apart. Uh, I'm gonna mount this better in just a minute. Basically, whoever had the shell before me, or I guess ARE, the, the people who built the shell, they just had the wires like screwed in just drapes down this way. I didn't want that, so I took all these panels off and you know, hit the wire behind all this stuff. Be a nice clean connection and we won't have to look at it. Yeah, I'm gonna finish that up and then we'll test it out. Nicely crimped, heat shrunk. Now I just gotta take care of this mess. So I'm gonna remove all this old stuff and clean it up. Well, there it is. I guess it's time to test it, right? I think it works. Let me review the footage and, and see if that's true. It works, it looks good. Time to put this shit back together too. Not one, but two license plate lights. Okay, so I got the subfloor back in. This was from my like previous iteration of living in the truck. So this will be the, the subfloor yet again. It's still the same shape, obviously. I just made this threshold for the entrance. I haven't screwed it down yet, but I have the screw holes here because I'm going to take the floor back out, but I just wanted to make that threshold so we have a nice entrance to the truck that is durable because last time I just had the wood exposed and over time, you can imagine that would get scuffed up and beat up. So we just got some angled aluminum, screwed it all together, measured it out. Looks pretty good. So now I'm standing here just trying to figure out what my next steps are. In a perfect world, we would fix this sort of rust. But if you've ever dealt with rust, there's no way to actually fix this. You're just buying yourself like a little bit of time if we go to patch this up like that. You know, we could fix that. But as you get further back into the truck, the rust is more severe. So like right here, this is not fixable without cutting the metal and then welding in new pieces of metal. And for me, there's, there's no point. This thing's watertight for the most part. This rust doesn't affect that. Eventually, I'm gonna replace the bed with a fiberglass one anyways. Fun fact, when 
these trucks were imported from Japan to America, Toyota was able to get around some sort of loophole if they took the beds off and then sent them over. I think taxes were significantly less. Long story short, they had some other company in America design and then put beds on these trucks when they got here and they would paint them the same color, everything like that. The design was horrible. I mean, it looks good, but functionality, like long-term, take a look, I mean, that should never happen that's that's avoidable so there's a, a panel that goes here and all kinds of shit collects in here and then the water will sit in there and over time you just have water sitting and then it just rots the metal they could have easily put drainage holes all along the sides and i'm pretty sure that the japanese beds they do have drainage so that being said this thing's gonna be replaced anyway so i'm not worried about the rust we're gonna probably just pretend like it's not there we'll just be in denial so the next step, I think, I, I want to make this floor a bit more level. If you really look at it, it sort of dips down in the middle. It's not so apparent in the video here. Eh, maybe a little bit, but the bed is a little bit bent in the middle. So I want to reinforce underneath so we have a nice platform to work on. Also, in terms of insulation, I don't think I'm going to insulate anything. My goal is to either live in, in the LA area or the Bay area and those places don't get too cold at all. And it's actually, in my eyes, it's useful to have no insulation. If we have insulation, it gets hot in the day. It's gonna be difficult to, to cool this thing off. You know, the nighttime will roll around, but we still got a lot of heat in here. If there's no insulation, then obviously the heat will, will be able to escape. So I'm gonna probably level the floor, reinforce it, put this wood back on. Uh, we'll put these side panels back on. I'll clean everything up, obviously. You wanna have a nice clean environment. Gonna leave the rust, pretend it's not there. And then I'll reinstall this whole setup I had here. My whole bed and slide out drawer and everything like that. After that, then we'll play around with ideas in terms of what we want here. I, I definitely want a refrigerator, so we're definitely gonna do that. Be ideal to have it here. I think my bed ended up coming out to like here, something like that. So we have quite a bit of room for a refrigerator. Might do a sink in the in the back there. Not sure. After that, then we can reimagine this whole shell part. I could line it with really thin uh, plywood. That would be cool. The other idea is just carpet the entire thing. You know, not carpet, carpet, but the, the carpet that's using, you know, car trunks or like the ceilings of cars. So that would be good for condensation purposes. Yeah, then we could do some lighting and stuff like that. Yeah, I gotta get the foundation going first, so. Oh yeah, I also rekeyed all these locks, so they work with just one key, which is awesome. Don't have to mess with three different keys. So we got that lock, we got the back one, and then this one. So we're all locked up now. I feel like maybe I'm paranoid, but we're right next to the railroad and there's always some sketchy people coming in and out of here, but uh, gotta keep everything locked up. They're eyeing my shit already, I can feel it. Well, it rained a lot. Turns out the camper shell is not watertight. Took this whole panel off just to get to the bottom of it. I think there's a leak like right there. So we'll have to address that. Doesn't seem like a big thing, but now that I have that panel off, I really do think that lining this whole thing with wood would be awesome. I think cedar planks would be ideal. I know they use that same exact wood in, in saunas. So I know it does well in high humidity areas. So just trying to imagine it now, but it would be easy because these cross members, you just screw right to those. It'd be very doable. So I think I might just take all the other panels off so I can find any other potential leaks. So some of this stuff is riveted to the metal underneath. So I can't like remove that. So I'm gonna have to drill these rivets out and then take this component off. Same with these gas struts. They're mounted to some bracket that's riveted to the frame. It's not so easy to remove all this stuff, but I'm gonna do it and just replace these rivets with screws. That way we have like a, a very clean slate to work with and check for any leaks. Start from pretty much nothing and, and work our way up. So over the next couple hours, I think I'm gonna be removing all these panels couple hundred screws later we got all those panels off now this is what we have boom the skeleton the real skeleton it's pretty clean all around those panels were actually pretty beat up i think i'm actually gonna go buy some wood paneling right now just strike while the iron's hot i don't know at some point we're gonna put that in here looks like i could definitely fit some eight foot long pieces of wood through both windows here so we're gonna go give that a shot just barely fit Close call, 100 square feet, there we go. Holy shit, I need a shave. Yeah, we got our we got our wood right here, man. Quick little horn repair. So this is the problem right here. This contact has worn all the way down. It doesn't contact the back of the steering wheel. So when you hit the button, it doesn't complete the circuit. Easy fix. It's like 15 bucks from Toyota. I'm gonna replace this and then should be good for another 30 years. 
All right, had to take this all the way apart. That's okay, it wasn't too bad. But it's just interesting to see this. They don't make stuff like this anymore. The quality, the just the wiring, everything like that. The wire management, the zip ties. If you look at a new car, you won't see anything like this. It's just, this is from a, a bygone era. And uh, this truck is awesome. <laughs> Today, this truck is awesome. Also, check this out. To be able to get in here and take that clip off is very easy because whoever designed this housing, they put a little cutout right here so you can get your pliers in there. But once again, if you tear into anything modern like this, you won't see attention to detail like that anymore. Things nowadays are just meant to be thrown in the garbage, not repaired. Back together. Nice. Isn't that a cute little horn? I miss that a lot, I'm not gonna lie. All right, so I just finished wiring these spade connectors. I'm gonna go out to the truck and then wire these two speakers and then hook them up to the radio. Got the driver speaker wired up, some zip ties. Gotta have it proper, gotta have it look good. I'm gonna do something about this because there's no rubber boot that connects like the cabin of the car to the door. Eh, it's not. It's not proper, so I'm gonna add a little something to that. All right, so this is what we came up with. That's gonna get pinched when I close the door, so I'm gonna get some sort of clamp to hold it there. There we go. Okay, we got both speakers put back together. Everything works great. It sounds amazing, honestly. I, I didn't think it was gonna sound that good. It's just two Pioneer speakers. I got them a while ago, but I I've never actually hooked them up. There was just no point because the radio I had was just very old school, no Bluetooth. So now everything works. Very happy with that. Also fixed the, the cigarette lighter. That never worked the whole time I've owned the truck. Somebody hacked the wiring up behind it. I don't know what they were doing, but I put it all back together how it originally should have been. We've got USB-C and then USB be 2.0 whatever the hell it is so we can charge stuff with that what else i glued this cracked thing it's good now can't tell solid uh things are coming together i got some custom cocoa mats coming soon so that'll be here in a couple weeks i don't know interior is looking good got a nice big crack here but it never bothered me because it's so low you know you don't really see it as you drive um i might just leave that but yeah, that's it for now. What do you know? Camper shell, back off. Whoever sealed this shit originally hasn't really held up very well. So I'm taping off every single seam, cleaning the cracks with a toothbrush, spraying this shit in it. It's honestly a pain. I'm gonna reseal everything, even the window here. So I'm just taping off everything so that I can just come in with a, a caulking gun and just run it down and then smooth it out and have it look good. So yeah, 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 this is gonna take some doing, but uh, it has to be done. So it's all taped up. Every seam. We're gonna do something like this. Yeah, I might as well see what it's gonna look like before I do all of them. Yeah, it looks way better than before. So yeah, we're gonna do that all the way around and then let it cure overnight and then we should be watertight. Even with the masking tape, this is a fucking messy ass job. So today my max air fan arrived. So we're gonna work on installing that today. This is the shroud for the fan. So I just traced the outer perimeter onto the roof. I double checked inside that we're not gonna hit anything. So I'm gonna drill the corners out, all four of those, so that I can get my jigsaw blade in there and just run it down. Got my hole started. Just need to get the blade in there. Also, this is what we have inside. The fan's gonna sit in between these two cross members. Let's cut it all the way out now. First little incision. It's going very good. Here's our hole. We got the flange in there, fits perfectly. So this is what the fan looks like. I just quickly sat it up there. It's not mounted permanently just yet. Waiting on some caulking to arrive. It should be here tomorrow. It's a very specific kind. That being said, this fan is remote controlled. It's not wired obviously, but you can open it. So it sits flat normally on the roof, but then you can open it and then adjust the fan speeds with the remote and also switch the direction so you can pull air in or, or push air out. So that's gonna be a game changer. Yeah, I would've killed for this last time I lived in the truck. The goal now is to take care of all the wiring that's gonna be in the ceiling. As far as I have planned, is it's gonna be a, a fan overhead lighting, some sconces that mount into the wood ceiling that'll be there. And then uh, solar panels that will be right behind the fan. Should be able to nicely fit a couple panels behind
behind this fan. Ideally, this flange needs something to mount to. I mean, the roof is very thin. It's just aluminum, so it doesn't make any sense to screw directly into that. We are going to go through the roof, but into this wood. So I'm just cutting a template. I'm just doing the same thing, drilling some holes, get my jigsaw in there and cut it out. Here is the piece of wood. Now, it's going to work like this. Be able to screw into that. So I'm just going to put it up, see if it fits. All right, there's the hole. Uh, so this wood's gonna mount right here like so and then we'll screw into it from the from the roof there Fucking leaf blowers, man. So I replaced the, the throttle cable recently been replacing all of these vacuum lines So I've done most of them so far. I did the power steering lines. I did all these little ones I need to order a little bit more line to finish a few of the ones here. Yeah, all these lines are super old I just don't want any any vacuum leaks because this thing idles weird sometimes and I think it's some vacuum leaks that I'm sorting out. So yeah, replacing this dipstick, same kind of thing. This uh, gasket right here was blown out on the old dipstick, so that can create a vacuum issue. Also doing other little things. Uh, this bolt, this hold down bolt was never correct. I know this is a very specific bolt. So uh, I found the right one. I'm gonna take this old rusty one out and replace it with the correct one. There's the old one. This actually seals some oil from coming out of the engine. So yeah, this has been probably leaking a little bit, but uh, so we got the correct one now. So this bolt holds the distributor down. So you can adjust the timing. So yeah, mechanically, the next thing I wanna take care of is this power steering system. This is the reservoir. It's been leaking for quite some time. I've gone through pretty much everything on this engine other than the power steering system. So I'm gonna replace this low pressure line. And then I also bought a kit to reseal the, the power steering pump itself. So I'm gonna take that off and rebuild that and then put all new fluid in the system. Now, an overview of this whole engine. I just got my little booklet here, just trying to remind myself of what I've done. So yeah, like I said, I've gone through this whole thing in the past couple years or past three or so years. So in 2022, head gasket, timing chain sprockets, the uh, timing chain guides, and also the tensioner that keeps tension on the chain. Rebuilt the head, so all new valves. Had the original camshaft reground. I found a company that they'll take your original camshaft because the, the metal is very good quality and you can't really buy that anymore. They'll take your, your camshaft and reground it to the factory specs. The way they do it is very interesting. You can look it up if you want. Yeah, what else? Replace the tappet screws. Those are on your rocker arms. Had the rocker arms resurfaced. So I got the original still in there. I had the fuel injectors rebuilt and tested by 22RE Performance. They do a really good job at that. Replace the thermostat, valve cover, gasket, and oil cover gasket. So that gasket that just seals this cap and then the valve cover gasket right here. I also replaced these little, I don't even know, I think they're half moon shaped things. I forget what they're called, but these stock ones are not so good. They always leak. So 22RE Performance, they make these. They just replace the original style seal, which this has been totally leak free for a few years now. So definitely works. Um, what else? Yeah, I put new head bolts. Those are very expensive. They're like a hundred bucks just for the bolts. Uh, rotor and cap. So the rotor and cap that's been replaced. And then there's a few O-rings in there that I've replaced as well. Spark plugs and wires. So yeah, all new wires. Uh, those are Toyota wires, very expensive. Air filter goes in here. That's been replaced. The oil pan. When I was doing the timing chain and the head and all that, you had to take the oil pan off. So I resealed that. Also the front crank seal where the, the crankshaft comes through. There's a circular seal that you replace. So replace that. I took the alternator apart, replaced the brushes because they were very worn. Water pump is down in there. Replace that. Also the oil pump even further down. Both drive belts. Uh, yeah, so there's one here. I actually replaced this again recently. This pulley, this idle pulley, the bearing was worn in it, so there's a lot of play in it, and it just caused the belt to get chewed up. So replaced that recently. More OCD things, radiator cap. Got the original, expensive, but worth it. Fuel filter under the air intake, yeah. That is like deep within there, it's like underneath. There's no way to replace it unless you take this whole engine apart from the top, basically. Replace that. Exhaust manifold gasket. That is this gasket right here. Uh, intake manifold gasket. There's one here, and then there's also one right there that is lengthwise that way clean the throttle body there's also a gasket replaced also the valve cover grommets and nuts very specific 
those prevent vacuum leaks as well as oil leaking did a valve adjustment with the engine cold moving on down other stuff brake fluid flush did the clutch fluid as well did another valve adjustment with it hot i realized that you're supposed to do it hot so i redid my work i think it was still fine yeah this is all other stuff drive shaft stuff God damn it. Uh, oil filter, that's all basic. Front differential fluid, also do the rear, and transfer case, transmission fluid. This was a couple years ago, more oil. Yeah, I, I went through the whole rear brake system. One of my axle shafts, well, I forget what the term is, but where the axle plugs into the differential, there's a seal there. That I guess it's just an axle seal. That axle seal blew. When that happens, you get oil all over everything and you just have to replace the brakes. And it was about time anyway. So went through the whole thing, used Toyota parts. It was really expensive. So rear drums, replaced the brake hoses, the, the shoes, also the cylinders. Those are, you can still get those new from Toyota. And for me, it was worth it. Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. I re I redid all the, the oil again for the transfer case and the rear differential, front differential. I don't know. I'm just fucking OCD, but some of them were leaking. I, I don't think I got new crush washer, so don't don't ever make that mistake. It's like a $2 part, but you have to redo the whole job basically. Because you can't just tighten it down, it still, it still won't seal. Also did the wheel bearings in the rear and the inner and outer seal. Yeah, that was what I talked about. Brake fluid flush, just procedural. Truck out stolen, new catalytic converter. Did a valve adjustment recently. Just a bunch more shit. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. Also replaced the heater core. These are the lines that come from the cabin of the truck. That was like a two day job. When I got the truck, it didn't even have heat. I mean, it was broken. The heater core was leaking, so somebody bypassed it. They just take, uh, instead of the hot coolant coming from the engine to go into the heater core, it just goes back into the engine. So you just connect these two lines together. Then you've got a closed system that just skips over the, uh, the heater core. Yeah, that was a pain in the ass. I spent two full days working on that. It's been good ever since, had heat. Totally worth the time. It's only like a hundred dollar part. I've gone through this truck basically. Still two things I gotta fix. The transmission, we're gonna drop it and have it rebuilt by a Marlin. It's only 1200 bucks. My fifth gear, when you put it into fifth, it just makes a, a really bad sound. I, I'm sure there's a bearing issue. I just, I need to have fifth gear. I can't just be riding fourth. So that's gonna get replaced in the next couple months. Uh, I'm gonna have them take my old transmission and rebuild it. Instead of using their core, I wanna use my original. Keep it all around. Original. Another huge thing is I put air conditioning in this truck uh, about a year ago, two years ago. I can't even remember. This truck just came with heat from the factory. So it, it had no AC components. Not like the AC was broken. It just never had air conditioning. So I found a company that makes all the parts that you can slap in. But even then it's still a pain in the ass. You got to take everything apart. I had to tear the dash apart, put an evaporator underneath the dash, you know, cut all these holes for these lines, install the compressor and the condenser. You got to remove the radiator and space it out properly and make all this stuff mount correctly. Not easy. It does work very good. It was definitely worth it. I think if you had somebody install this for you, this whole thing probably would have cost five grand. The system itself was a few grand. It was like two grand, maybe not five grand, maybe like four grand. It's, it was just a, a big effort, but totally worth it. Yeah, other than that, there's one main issue. There's a crack in the engine block. I know that sounds really bad, but I'll stick in a picture. But basically I uh, redid the head and head gasket and everything because I thought the head gasket was leaking externally. So I redid all that, fire the engine up, drive it around. And then I, I noticed that the coolant leak that I originally spotted, which is deep under here. I'll, like I said, I'll put a picture in. That was still leaking and it blew my mind, but basically there's a crack in the block. So coolant just comes out of the block. It's not a lot, but it's enough to bother me. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get to the bottom of this and actually repair it. I have to remove the exhaust man fold all this stuff to get access to it again should have did it while i was deep in the engine but i just had no idea that the block was cracked yeah so you can see the red coolant dripping down the side of the block here there's a couple different angles it looks like that casting whatever letter that is a g or a c whatever they stamped in there and whatever that thing is is just a weak point for the engine block if you look on the left and right hand side of that little stamp you can see the the freeze plugs and so basically you have a coolant jacket within the block where coolant is pushed through that jacket by the water pump. If 
your coolant ratio ever becomes weird. So if you have like way too much water in your coolant, and then if you park the truck in like a freezing area, then, uh, you know, water expands when it freezes. So instead of the block cracking, these those freeze plugs on the left and right hand side, those will just pop out of the block and alleviate the pressure. That being said, sometimes those don't work and the, the block itself will become susceptible to, to cracking. So I think that that kind of happened here. Yeah, now that you've seen the picture, I think my idea is to drill a hole through that like casting where that letter is and then just put threads in it and then put a plug with some sealant. I don't think the crack has migrated much out of that area. I think it's just within that little casting. So I think we might be okay. Worst case, we just leave it, but it's just been bothering me for so long. Yeah, so that'll be taken Taken care of and then the transmission and then after that there's pretty much nothing in the engine bay at all that needs to be done there's really nothing so that was very long-winded but honestly this is just for me just to have some documentation i've got it all written down but it's good just to walk through it for myself and just remember all the work that's been done keep in mind i did all of that stuff that i just talked about and then the truck was stolen and it was just like fuck my life man it, it was stolen in the summer i just imagine those people driving around using my air conditioning and it's not a it's not a beater truck mechanically it's pretty well kept it looks pretty clean. Every part I've ever taken off this thing, I've scrubbed perfectly clean. So most 22 REs that are this old, you just won't see them this clean. I put a lot of love into this truck. Like I said, I've talked shit about, but I really do like it. It's never left me stranded. It annoys me, but I love it. I'm pretty sure I have pictures of all this stuff over the years. So I'm just gonna put a little slideshow in. Why not? So this is a picture of the engine bay before I did any major work to the truck. We're basically looking at 160,000 miles and whoever owned the truck probably never really cleaned the engine. So it was just filthy, tons of oil leaks, just a mess. Now you can see how filthy this engine is. My hands are just covered in black oil. I, you had to basically take a credit card and and scrape off oil gunk in order to clean this engine. So you can also see the, the intake side and how confusing everything is, how many wires and vacuum lines, and it's just a spider web of shit, to be honest with you. It's really hard to put back together. This is when I removed the head, disassembling everything, taking pictures, just making sure I've got before pictures in order to you know put everything back together correctly. Uh, this is the rebuilt head. So I had the original head rebuilt by a local machine shop. They did a really good job. Cost an arm and a leg, but it's way better than buying a new head because the new heads, the, the quality is just awful. This is the rocker arm assembly. This is before I had the, the surfaces redone. And this is what I found when I removed the head. It seemed like a lot of the passages where the coolant goes through was pretty much blocked off from rust. So it was, it was definitely a good thing that I replaced the head gasket because the cooling system was probably not working that well. I cleaned the tops of the cylinders, also cleaned the, the, the block of the engine as best as I could, scraped off all the old stuff, took multiple hours doing that job just to make sure it was just perfect. I feel like if you pay anybody to do a head gasket job, they're not gonna take that amount of time like a shop. They're just gonna quickly scrape it off and slap it all back together. But for me, if you want it done right, you gotta spend a few hours cleaning that block. So got it perfect, clean the, the pistons like I mentioned. This is the valve cover, pretty filthy. Cleaned it up with just soap, took a long time. Uh, I was able to, to keep the original 22RE sticker in the front. It's got some nice patina on it. This is the whole head assembly. We've got the head with the new valves. We've got new studs for the intake where it bolts on and, and the exhaust where it bolts on. We've got a new, well, it's the, the original camshaft, but just reground. And then the rocker arm assembly that, that was redone as well. Uh, this is the new head gasket, Toyota, genuine. Now this is the first process of putting it all back together. So I got the head on, camshaft in, rocker arm assembly on timing chain. This is the intake side. You can see I cleaned everything up as best as I could. Yeah, put the intake assembly on. These are just various parts, different brackets, different pulleys. They're just beat up. So I sanded them all and then painted them all. And then, yeah, we've got it all back together. It's a big process. Here's me setting the timing of the engine. Now this is just like other various jobs I've done on the truck and just interesting pictures that I have of the truck. 
So this is the climate control panel, replace that. Uh, my buddy Rory helped me with this. The fuel pump died on me, was able to get home just barely, but then when I got home, I couldn't turn the truck back on. So the best way to replace it is to remove the bed because the tank is basically right in the middle there. And then the fuel pump just sits into the tank. So we took the bed off, honestly, not that heavy. We, I think we had like three or four people lift it off. Replaced the fuel pump with a Bosch one. I think the uh, original like Toyota one was $400. So I went with the Bosch one. Now, this is way back when I pretty much first acquired the truck. I took it all apart, trying to replace the heater core like I was talking about. I took the, the whole interior apart and, and scrubbed all the carpets. There was mold in there, nothing horrible, but I just wanted to start from scratch, clean it all up, figure out where the water was getting in. Well, it turns out that the firewall leaks. It's a, it's a problem with these older Toyotas where there's a sealant in the firewall and water gets past it over time because that sealant cracks. Uh, basically, the only way to fix that is to remove the fenders and then drill some welds to be able to pull some metal apart so you can get in there and add some new sealant, which is crazy. Big job, pain in the ass, but I just didn't want a leaking truck with like water on the carpets and everything. So I did that and then I had to weld everything back together, like all those joints that I took apart. Put that all back together. It's been leak free ever since, so that was worth it. Here's my buddy Tyler. He's helping me clean the engine out of my Mercedes. We had it flipped over on an engine stand and we were just like OCD cleaning it and we're just like barbecuing some stuff in the back of the truck there. <laughs> Here's a nice snowy day, another snowy day. Uh, this is before I owned the truck. This is the previous owner, his grandson drove it for a bit. Yeah, he took it to some cool places, I guess. This same same story. These are the pictures he gave me when he was trying to sell the truck. He's like, yo, this is what the truck looks like. And I was like, all right, man, I'm gonna buy that. I'm ready. I only got the one speaker and it's fucking up on me right now. Yeah, so that completes the video. Here's just a few more pictures. I'm just gonna roll. Thanks for watching.